This episode is brought to you by Brilliant. Have you ever ran a red light and smashed into an old Chevy CK? Well, there's a fascinating piece of technology that can be found both in the phone that you were texting on and the airbag system that just saved you from poor life choices. When an airbag deploys, the electronics of the airbag system takes just 15 milliseconds to decide if the forces on the vehicle are severe enough to activate. Within 60 milliseconds from the instant of impact, the airbag is fully deployed. The entire process from initial vehicle contact to deployment happens in almost half the time it takes for your thumb to hit send. And at the heart of an airbag system is a microscopic class of mechanisms that allow your smartphone to guide you to the liquor store, inkjet printers to print, and projectors to throw images on a screen. Let's sober up, get our story straight, and learn about the fascinating world of microelectromechanical systems. Microelectromechanical systems, or MEMS, are tiny integrated devices that combine mechanical and electrical components. Traditional manufacturing techniques such as milling, turning, and molding become impractical at small scales, so MEMS devices are fabricated using the same batch processing techniques used to fabricate integrated circuits. These devices can range in size from a few microns to several millimeters. What makes MEMS devices so powerful is their ability to sense, control, and actuate on a microscopic scale, yet generate effects at macro scales. MEMS technologies are highly interdisciplinary in nature and require engineering and manufacturing expertise from a diverse range of technical areas, such as integrated circuit fabrication technology, mechanical, electrical, chemical, and fluid engineering, material science, optics, and instrumentation. Their application spans across several industries, all of which are manufactured inexpensively and in high commercial volume. Because MEMS devices are a hybrid of mechanical and electronic mechanisms, they are generally fabricated using a combination of traditional integrated circuit technologies and more sophisticated methods that manipulate both silicon and other substrates in a manner that exploits their mechanical properties. In traditional integrated circuit manufacturing, known as photolithography, a silicon wafer serves as the base substrate. The wafer surface is oxidized to form a silicon dioxide layer. This oxide surface is then coated with an ultraviolet sensitive polymer called a photoresist. A pattern of ultraviolet light is projected onto the photoresist through a photomask, which is then chemically developed. During mass development, the more common positive photoresist becomes removable by the development agent when exposed to UV light, while a negative resist is removed in areas shielded from UV light. This patterned photoresist then serves as a mask for subsequent processing steps. The unmasked oxide layer is chemically etched away and atoms are radiated onto the exposed regions penetrating into the silicon beneath in a highly controlled manner, changing its conductive properties. The remaining photoresist is then chemically washed away and the process is repeated dozens of times using the remaining layer of oxide as a mask for each subsequent layer. The buildup of the layers of material with different semiconductive properties forms the circuitry of the chip. Silicon also has excellent mechanical properties as it forms the same type of crystal structure as diamond, though much weaker, and it is harder than most materials. It's also surprisingly resistant to mechanical stress, having a higher elastic limit than steel in both tension and compression. MEMS fabrication, much like integrated circuit fabrication, involves the addition or subtraction of two-dimensional layers on a substrate based on photolithography and etching. The 3D components of MEMS devices are due to patterning and interactions of the 2D layers stacked on each other. The manufacturing process of these devices fall into three general classifications, bulk micromachining, surface micromachining, and high aspect ratio micromachining, or HARM. In bulk micromachining, the substrate is removed in a manner similar to traditional integrated circuit techniques. An oxide mask is created and the exposed substrate is etched away. The pattern of the etching is determined by the type of etching. Isotropic etchings remove material equally in all directions while anisotropic etchings are limited by the geometry of the structure to be etched. Anisotropic etchings usually etch faster in a preferred direction. The etch resistance of the substrate can also be controlled by selectively bombarding it with atoms of boron in intermediate steps using traditional photolithographic techniques. 
While traditional wet chemical etching can be used, a more common approach is to use a reactive gas driven into a plasma state via radio frequency energy in an etching process known as reactive ion etching. Surface micromachining, by comparison, is predominantly additive in nature and is used to create more complex MEMS-based machinery. Material is deposited on the surface of the substrate in layers of thin films. These layers can be either structural or an oxide-based scaffolding known as a sacrificial layer. The scaffolding is then etched away leaving only the structural layers. Surface micromachining can create very complex structures with overhangs. It can be used to create sliding structures, actuators, and free-moving mechanical gears. Even microscopic motors have been achieved using enhanced variants of the process. In order to form more complex and larger MEMS structures, micromachined silicon wafers can be bonded to other materials in a process known as fusion bonding. It's a technique that allows the seamless integration of multiple layers via atomic bonding between them. Fusion bonding allows for the use of more exotic materials such as metals, glass, ceramics, and even organics such as polymers, enzymes, antibodies, and even DNA. High aspect ratio micromachining differs dramatically from the other two techniques in that it's reminiscent of traditional casting. Typically a metal base is first coated with a thick acrylic layer. Then through a mask, x-rays are projected onto the surface, creating a shaped cavity. Electroplating is then done to fill the cavity with metal. And finally, the acrylic is etched away, leaving an embossed metal structure. High aspect micromachining is one of the most attractive technologies for replicating microstructures at a high performance to cost ratio. Some common products micromachined with this technique include fluidic structures such as nozzle plates for inkjet printing and microchannel plates for disposable microtiter plates that are used in medical diagnostic applications. Let's take a look at those popular applications of MEMS devices we mentioned earlier and explore how they function. The accelerometers used in automotive airbag sensors were one of the first commercial devices using MEMS technology. In widespread use today, they measure the rapid deceleration of a vehicle upon hitting an object by sensing a change in voltage. Based on the rate of this voltage change, the on-die circuitry subsequently sends a signal to trigger the airbag's explosive charge. The accelerometer mechanism is composed of a capacitive finger structure consisting of a pendulum assembly that forms the proof mass. This compliance structure deflects under acceleration or deceleration. This deflection creates a differential capacitance. The resulting voltage signal created by this is then processed by the circuitry on the device. Initially, airbag technology used a conventional mechanical ball and tube type device, which was relatively complex, weighs several pounds, and costs several hundreds of dollars. The move to MEMS-based sensors was directly responsible for the success of MEMS technology and micromachining technology in the industry. With over half a billion of these devices in vehicle operation today, the reliability of the technology has been proven. Some vehicles even employ dozens of MEMS accelerometers for their traction control, braking, and handling aids. MEMS-based accelerometers can also be configured to sense motion in three axes. With the rise of smartphones, this capability quickly became indispensable. In this configuration, the proof mass is suspended at the center of a frame by microscopic springs in a manner similar to a trampoline. Acceleration in the XY plane is sensed by capacitive fingers fixed to the frame of each respective axis in a manner similar to a single axis accelerometer sensor. Both sensing structures also contain electrodes that can sense vertical travel of the proof mass, forming the simultaneous action of a Z axis accelerometer. Accelerometers are not just limited to automotive and mobile phone applications. They can also be found in earthquake detection equipment, VR gaming systems, pacemakers, high performance disk drives, and weapon arming systems. In most smartphones, a MEMS-based gyroscope complements the accelerometer. They're also found in navigation equipment, avionics, and virtually any modern device that requires rotation sensing. MEMS gyroscopes work by suspending an accelerometer on a platform that in itself uses a MEMS-based solenoid to create a constant oscillating motion. This configuration exploits the Coriolis effect in which the angular force applied to a moving mass creates a perpendicular force. The perpendicular force is sensed by the suspended accelerometer and then translated to a rotational measurement by on-die signal processing circuitry. Another hugely successful application of MEMS technology is the inkjet printer head. Inkjet printers use a series of nozzles to spray drops of ink directly onto a medium. Depending on the type of inkjet printer, 
two popular MEMS technologies are used to accomplish this, thermal and piezoelectric. MEMS-based thermal inkjet printer head technology was invented by Hewlett Packard in 1979. The technique makes use of the thermal expansion of ink vapor in order to eject ink. Within the printer head, there is an array of tiny resistive heaters. These resistors are triggered by a processor in short pulses of only a few microseconds. Ink in contact with the resistor is rapidly heated at a rate of 100 degrees Celsius per microsecond, vaporizing the ink to form a bubble. This process is called bubble nucleation. As the bubble expands, a drop is formed and pushed out of the nozzle, landing on the paper and solidifying. When the bubble collapses, a vacuum is created which pulls more ink into the print head from the reservoir within the cartridge. Sometimes referred to as a bubble jet process, thermal inkjet printer heads demonstrate that not all MEMS devices require moving parts to function. In piezoelectric printer heads, a more direct kinetic approach is used. A piezoelectric crystal is located at the back of a chamber in each nozzle. The piezoelectric crystal element receives a very small electric charge causing it to vibrate. When it moves inward, it forces a tiny amount of ink out of the nozzle. As the element moves back out, it pulls some more ink into the chamber to replace the ink that was ejected. Though originally developed by Epson, this technique is used by all major printing companies today. Advances in MEMS fabrication techniques have enabled more ink injecting elements to be incorporated into a printer head. Early printers had only 12 nozzles with a maximum resolution of up to 92 dots per inch. Today modern inkjet printers have up to 600 nozzles which can all fire a droplet simultaneously enabling 1200 dots per inch of printing. One of the earliest uses of MEMS devices in the form of large mechanical arrays on a single die has been for display applications. Invented by Texas Instruments, Digital micro mirror device technology, often marketed as digital light processing or DLP, can be found in consumer projectors, projection televisions, and large venue projectors such as in digital cinemas where traditional liquid crystal technology cannot compete. Digital micro mirror devices are composed of an array of millions of tiny pixel mirror elements. Each pixel is made of a multi-layered device consisting of an aluminum mirror mounted on hinges. These pixels rest on a CMOS memory cell. By changing the value of the memory cell, electrostatic forces alter the angle of the mounted mirror, typically by plus or minus 10 degrees. These mirrors can be repositioned rapidly to reflect light from a powerful lamp or LED, either through the lens or onto a heatsink known as a light dump. Because each pixel is rapidly pulsing its reflected light on and off through the lens, the level of brightness is controlled by adjusting the ratio of on to off time. Color is achieved by mixing red, green, and blue light through the device. The two primary methods are via a single chip or using three discrete chips. In the single chip method, a synchronized color wheel is used to project frames of each color in succession, producing the illusion of a color image. This method generally creates a moving color distortion known as the rainbow effect. The three chip method addresses this issue by splitting up light from the projection source into its component colors via a prism. Each primary color is processed through its own dedicated chip and the three reflected images are recombined at the lens. This technique allows for more precise and robust color as well as sharper images. Digital micro mirror devices form the basis for another emerging application of MEMS technology, electro-optics. Optical communications has become the only practical means to address the network scaling issues created by the tremendous growth in data traffic. Routing technologies that rely on electronics to function as a switching element create bottlenecks as optical signals are switched back and forth to electrical information. These bottlenecks can be eliminated by using fully optical networks that offer far superior throughput capabilities. MEMS technology has been proven to be an effective tool in this. Their small size, low cost, low power consumption, durability, and high switching density form a perfect solution to the problems of control and switching of optical signals. Devices such as waveguides, optical switches, cross connects, and multiplexers have all been produced with success. By using a mechanism similar to a micro mirror display device, optical signals can be routed from a source signal to hundreds of possible destinations by steering light through an actuated microscopic mirror. This concept has brought once expensive optical switching components down to the sub-dollar level. One of the most promising applications of MEMS technologies has been the emergence of biomedical MEMS devices. Referred to as BioMEMS devices, 
They tend to focus on the processing of fluids at microscopic scales. Conceptualized as a lab on a chip, these devices can incorporate micromachine fluid pumps, chemical sensors, flow controllers, nozzles and valves into their overall design. These classes of devices enable the inexpensive, rapid and relatively convenient manipulation and analysis of small volumes of biological fluids. One of the first and simplest examples of a Biomems device is the micromachined micro titer plate. A micro titer plate is a flat plate with multiple wells used as small test tubes for testing and analysis. MEMS technology has been applied toward creating micro titer plates with working areas under 6 square centimeters. They are formed from plastic with high aspect ratio micro machined micro channels. The tiny sizes of these plates enables automatic filling by the use of capillary action. Despite the simplicity of these initial applications, the future of BioMEMS devices lie in their potential to deliver pharmaceuticals in a highly targeted manner. Insulin management, hormone therapy, chemotherapy, and pain management can all be accomplished by the careful release of drugs into the body from tiny chambers embedded in a MEMS device. Some advanced BioMEMS based research allows for sensing of the body's own internal chemistry to regulate the release of drugs. Several BioMEMS research labs have even demonstrated the capture of a single red blood cell and subsequent ejection of a protein into it via a 5 micron channel. These techniques open the door to direct cellular manipulation with DNA, proteins, and pharmaceuticals. The possibilities with MEMS devices are astounding. Applications from low loss ultra miniature and highly integrated tracking radio antennas to sensors that can measure heat, radiation, light, acoustics, pressure, motion and even detect chemicals. As MEMS based machinery become more refined, we get closer to a new frontier of nanotechnology that will disrupt entire industries, challenging our current notions of the economics of manufacturing. The world of MEMS perfectly encapsulates the technical challenge of taking the macroscopic world of mechanical systems, merging them with decades of semiconductor advancements, and producing an entirely new class of mechanisms that operate at scales beyond our intuition. A great way to understand the fundamentals that laid the foundation for this evolution is with Brilliant. Brilliant is where I discover the thrill of learning, offering thousands of captivating interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. What makes it truly special is how it transforms complex, concepts into engaging, hands-on experiences that build real-world problem-solving skills. What sets Brilliant apart is their first principles approach. Instead of just watching lectures, you're actively solving a problem and building intuition. Each interactive lesson lets you experiment with concepts hands-on, a method that's proven to be six times more effective than passive learning. I love that all the content is crafted by leading experts from institutions like MIT, Caltech, and companies like Microsoft and Google who know how to make complex topics accessible. Brilliant immerses you in active problem solving from the start because truly learning a concept requires more than just watching and memorizing. You need to experience it. By engaging in hands-on learning, you not only build real-world knowledge on specific topics, but also develop critical thinking skills that make you a better thinker overall. What really works for me is how seamlessly Brilliant fits into my daily routine. Whether I'm waiting for coffee or on my morning commute, I can dive into a quick lesson and learn something meaningful instead of mindlessly scrolling. It helped me build a learning habit that actually sticks. A great place to jump in is Brilliant's circuit its course. It explains the physics driving electricity and demystifies how circuits function in common technologies. You'll learn through hands-on challenges that make electrical concepts feel both intuitive and genuinely practical. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash new mind or click on the link in the description below. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.